Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, singers. I, I, I certainly so much appreciate uh, that worship and music. <sighs> yes. Um, that's, that is such a promise to say, you know, Lord, I give myself to you. And, and I say yes. And, and it's, not so, it's not one of those things that you take it so lightly. It's one of those things that, you know, um, say, God, I'm going to, you know, do the best I can to, to, to prove to you that I love you. And I, before I go on, I, I just wanted to really, I, I appreciate all the pastors. Can we, can we give a hands again once again? Can you stand, please, for our pastors, please? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. You know, when you talk to these pastors and elders, when you, when you ask them, what do you need? You know, one thing that they say, just pray for us. Amen. Pray for us. Amen. That's, that, that's all they ask for is, is pray for us. I mean, aren't you glad to really belong to a ministry that, that really uh, that preaches the truth of God in, in the hearts of, of these people and not just preach it, but live it. And, and there's, there's powerful in that thing. And I, I, I just wanted to um, uh, bring greetings to my brother Ken over there. He, um, he preached such a message last Sunday. It, it, was, it was so powerful and it kind of paved the way for me today. It makes my job a lot easier. And, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he <laughs> and he sure did, um, and he um, he talked about it's it's in Proverbs chapter eleven verse thirty, and and it says like this, and it says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and that he and 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 he that winneth souls is wise, and I I I love what he said about it, and he said that um. Uh, we're, he, he talked about actually he was working in some place and he saw an apple tree or something and he took a bite of it and it was so, you know, people are just walking by to it and not paying attention to it. And he says it's just like, uh, it's just like us in God, you know, you're sh sharing the gospel in a crooked and perverse world. And, and, and he said something that I chuckled a little bit. He said that, <laughs> that um, uh, he said something like, uh, when we heard, he heard some word, and it says that uh, the person that dies, the person that has the most toys dies, he, he wins, something to that effect, right? Yeah. He dies with the most toys wins, okay, okay, so, yeah, that's what he said, and I was like, wow, I, I hope it's not me. <laughs> but that was what he talked about, and that was the theme of the month, you know, and, and we are in the ministry, we always, you know, the pastors, the ministers here, and we bring this theme of the month, and we just really um, uh, lay on lay on God's heart, and to just really, um, you know, pray for that scriptures to really blossom and and to put in, in in people's heart to really, you know, go through it. And and the theme of the week it's it's found in uh, Luke chapter five, and it it's in Luke five verse ten, and and so was also James and John the son of Zebedee, uh, which were partners with Simon, and Jesus said unto, uh, and Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And, and you know probably that what that means is, right? But before I go on, let's, let's have a prayer real quick. Let's have a prayer. Oh, God. <laughs> You know, as, you know I, I, I want to say we ushering the Spirit, but it's already here, Lord God. Your, your spirit is already here, and it's so rich. And, and I mean, just to listen to the testimonies and to the songs and the music and to the praise and worship of your people, God, it, it's already in us right now. And, and, and I just want to thank you so much, God, for, for, for choosing us, Lord God, because you said 
Many are chosen, but few, uh, I mean, many are called, but few are chosen. And, and God, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of, of the biggest family in, in, in the name of God. And, and, and today, Lord God, we just wanted to pray for your, for your message, Jesus. And, and, and God, let your words speak to our hearts and take us out of the way, Lord God, and put you in us and, and so that we can continue to, to, to minister and be ministered to us, to the world that you called, uh, that you wanted to be in this world, Lord God. Bless today. Bless the service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And so that is the, um, the, um, uh, the theme of the week. And uh, as you know, that would be, that's the one I'm going to probably you know, I'm gonna be talking about. And it says, uh, henceforth thou shalt catch men. And, and like I said, Brother Ken, just, he talks about um, uh, Peter and John were fishers of men. And actually, that, the title of the message this morning is called Fish, Fishermen, and fishers of men. <laughs> That's, and, and what are all these things in common? Well, I mean, what does that mean? Um, and, and, it's, and it's found really in the gospel. It, and when Jesus was walking by, he called these people, uh, said, you know, I'll make you fishers of men. And, and what that means is really, um, um, you, you basically were used by God to bring these people to God call them to God, and, and then you, you, you do the best you can to do the, you know, uh, to bring the love of God into these people, to draw them closer to God. And, and, that's, and that's what fishers of men really means according to the gospel. Uh, now, the, there's, there's many ways. There's many ways to, to share the word of God, many, many ways. But, but there's two things that people use the most, there are two things that most common people that use this, and, and one of that is is the evangelism, evangelize. They, basically what that is, is you know, when you go out there and you talk about the word of God to that person straightly from the gospel, you bring it to the, that word of God to that person. And the second one is, the second one is um, you sharing your faith with others. And, and what, what that is, is uh, it's not really you're talking about the word of God is really what you're talking about is that power of God, is that testimony that whatever God uh, dealt with you and how God made it, your, 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 your life is so powerful and you become a testimony of him standing for, for God. And you shared and you share that testimony to that person and that person just so amazed because you were going through different trials and tribulation, and you were like, yeah. you were like, what you, what you talking about? You know, that kind of attitude. And, and really, people, people does not understand that well. They, they don't. They, they, they come to me, what's, what's wrong with you? Why are you so laughing? You, you got all these kind of problems in your life, and you laugh. And, and, and that's what that is. And, Pastor Lee, he talked about Brother Eugene. That's exactly what his attitude was. Can you, I mean, this, I've never had his sickness, thank God. But you know what? He, he, he was like, he, was, he, he encouraged us when we came in there. He encouraged us more than we encouraged him. And it was, it was such a great time. And, and, and you heard the testimonies. And, and those are the things that God uses in sharing your faith to others. And they use, they use that. And then eventually, the people that you were sharing it with become so uh, interested with what you have to say about, you know, more. They want to hear more because they want to have what kind of richness. How do you do your life? You know? And so you, br you bring them the word of God to teach them the word of God eventually. So that's... That's what, what that is. But, but you know, being a fisher's of men, there's, it's, it's not, you, you, you just go, don't go out there and just do it. You know, there's, there's fishing has got some skills. You know, at one time, you know, you know, one time, at one time, fish, fishing was, was a, a way of life. That was, that was, uh, it, it, it was for survival. I mean, you don't go fish, you, you, you don't eat. You don't eat, you die. 
That's that's simple as that, well, you know. Well, and 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 it and it became uh, from uh, survival and it became a trade. And people do it for a job for money now. They just, you know, and that's what they do. And and nowadays, it becomes a recreational activity. You go out fishing out there. I was just, uh, you know, uh, killing some time, just trying to enjoy the weather, catch the fish, and take the fish and put them back in the water. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to eat that fish, but anyway, but but that's but that's what, <laughs> but that's what that's what you know, that's what happened. But but all those things that I mentioned, it, it doesn't come just like that. It, it comes with skills. It comes with. You have to know where you're going. You have to know where you, you know. And, and the same, same with sharing the word of God. It's, 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 not, it's not something, you know, when you become a Christian, you don't say, oh, I'm not going to read the Bible because I'm already a Christian. I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm already a Christian. You know, I, I'm saying. Yeah. But no, but if you want to know God, you want to know what he's about. And you want to know the kingdom of God, you got to learn, learn his word, you know. And that's, that's plain and simple. It comes in a package, okay. It's, it comes in a package. That's just, that's just the way it is. But, you know, with, with all the things that I mentioned, there's one skill that it's missing there. And, 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 and that is the anointing. Anointing of God. And the anointing of God it means it means the power and, and, and the presence of God is in that person, and and and, it, and it's so much so that you are just so bold with you know with everything that God has told you. You were just so bold to preach the word. You were just uh, uh, there was an authority that comes behind it, and and that is the anointing of of, of God. And that's part one of the message this morning. Now, I want to say, I'm not here, I'm not here to teach you the whole entire what the anointing is. I'm going to touch it because it's an important part of, of this message. Um, I mean, if you have questions, you can ask me if I have answer, and I'll talk about it uh, after, after service. But the anointing of God, the anointing of God is that power in the presence of God. And, and you would find this one in, in Genesis and what re really represent, really represent. But before I do that, before I do that, um, I'm, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about, uh, well, let's, let's read it. Let's read the Genesis. All right. Genesis chapter 28, verse, um, verse 10 through 18. Um, just to give you a background of, of this, um, Jacob is on a run. Because um, he was uh, being chased by his brother Esau. And, and that's, he's going to go run to his uncle Laban. That's where he's going. And on the way there, and this is what happened. Uh, and, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place. And he tarried there all night because the sun was set. It's kind of getting dark, so he got to go, you know. Set aside, you know, so that way, you know, it's not really smart to travel with the dark places, you know. And so, and then, and then he, and he took a stone of that place and he put them, put them for his pillows and lay down in a place to sleep. And then verse 12, it says, and he dreamed, and he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And on, and the top of that, and the top of it, reaches to heaven and behold the angels of God descending and ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac and the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seeds and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And thee, in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, I will keep thee in all places whither, whither goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. 
And then, and Jacob awake out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid, and he said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. So, you know, Jacob had a dream and, you know, he saw God, he talked, God talked to him and he saw a ladder, he saw a ladder and the angels sent, you know, going up and down to it and he was scared and he woke up. And, and what he did is took that, you know, he basically, he marked that place as a place of God. Amen. He marked that place as a place of God. Amen. And so he poured that oil on it as, as a sign of anointing to that place. Put it there. And in church, anointing is, it's, it's really it's, it, and like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's that presence of God. It's that presence of God in that person. But then when you go fast forward to the, new, uh, to the Old Testament, the Exodus, and I'm just going to touch a little bit about it, and, and um, God directs Moses and, and, and um, Aaron, direct Moses and Aaron to, to get these flowers, put them together, and all this, you know, um, I'm just going to name a little bit of it. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those spices, you know, they, uh, it's a sweet cinnamon uh, and um, uh, cassia, calamus, and olive oil, and all those things. And he, you know, God directs them to make this as an olive oil uh, and, and to use this as an anointing oil. And what that is, is to really... Uh, to consecrate, to sanctify that person or that object, to really specifically to use for God, to use for God as, as God wanted him to use for. And that's what that is. And, and, he, and, he, and this person is consecrated and separated and holy to use that person for God. Okay? And and so, you know what happened, right? Uh, his sons kind of messed up. The, uh, uh, he, they died, actually. Uh, his sons, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I got him right here. I forget his name. Uh, but anyway, Aaron's sons died, and they died because they offer this strange fire that they, they offer this strange fire that God says not to do. And they were, they were, they died. And this, this, this fire just came out of nowhere and just consumed them. And, and, and also, you know, that when God called a, uh, a kings and queen, a kings to anoint them, so the prophet will call them. The prophet will ask, God will ask the prophet to anoint certain kings, you know, just like He did to um, uh, King David, and He anoint them, okay, and to to do what? To to, to govern and to, to govern God's people the way God wants them to to handle them in the way of God, okay? That is what um, uh, he did. And also the anointing of the tabernacle, the anointing was used for healing. That's what he used. And it was carried all the way to the New Testament. And, and, and you know, it's in James chapter five, and it talks about, you know, if, if anybody's sick, call the elders of the church to anoint that person. And, and a lot of these, a lot of these um, kind of, didn't work out, not because it didn't work out for God, because the people didn't make it work. So what they did is a lot of people that were anointed, like the kings, they disobeyed God, and so the, 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 um, the, the priests, again, like I said, they disobeyed God. Uh, Nadab and Abihu, those are the ones that are uh, uh, the kings that, that, I mean, the priests that were died, um, they, they, um, 
they, they, they basically didn't have this, uh, they basically just kind of got wiped out. And so, like I said, the annoying thing didn't work. And it's not that it didn't work, the people didn't make it work. And so, what had happened is God says, I'm going to uh, uh, talk to Isaiah. And, and it's Isaiah 9 and 6, and it says, and it says right this, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That was the, uh, the prophecy that went forth to Isaiah. And, and I want to talk about just a little bit about government since there was election coming up, you know. I want to, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, people, they wanted to uh, be elected because they wanted to govern and rule what they want to happen to the, uh, to the, to the country. God is bringing his own government to this world. God is bringing his own rule to this world. And, and you know what I, you know, you know what, what I just kind of blew my mind? When you have a government, when you have a government, you have to have a country. And God's country is the kingdom of God. That's, that's, that's what it is. And so anyway, so fast forward to Isaiah 61, and it says in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, and it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and the anointing of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Excuse me for a second. I just, I just wanted to kind of pause in there and just really um, this, this is a powerful verse. This is a very, very powerful verse. Spirit of the Lord. And you know, Jesus took this word literally into his heart and his mind. And, and you know, the word Christ, it means anointed one and and they got that word from the word Mishak because he was the Messiah the word Messiah is the rubbing of the oil and so when he comes to the New Testament and and when you call Jesus Christ Christ is not really his last name just to make you know it's not his last name that's just the title and he say it means the Messiah the anointed one that's, that's what that is, you know, kind of like son of Barjona. Um, so anyway, so Christ means the anointed one. And, um, and, and, and what I want to say is really this, this, um, this particular scriptures, God, Jesus himself really took it to the heart, uh, not just uh, to his mind, to his heart, and, and to really live out it. And, and here's, here's, here's the really part of it. Um, church, if he, didn't, if he didn't take this to heart, if he didn't, this, is, this is really the message that Jesus really took all the way, even to the New Testament. Even to the New Testament. If he didn't take it to the heart, we, we will have another fall of man. Seriously. We will have another fall of man. And this is what Jesus did. And, and I, wanna, I, would just wanna, I would just want to drive to the point that, you know, when, when, you, when, you, are sh- you know, when you are sharing the gospel, it's, it's really, it's, it's, about, it's about survival. You know, it's about... You know, I said earlier, the fish, at one time, it was a, a, uh, 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 
a, 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 you know, a, 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 a reason to survive because that's what they want. That's what, that's what you uh, wanted to do to live. And, and Jesus is the anointed one. He took this to the heart. And, and part two of the message is called Fishing for Men, a Vital Means for, or, uh, of Survival. And before I read Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 10, I, I, I want to give you what happened, uh, the, the story of, because of, um, this, is, this is really powerful. And, and uh, you know, I, the Word of God is really, really uh, serious. And, and, and church, I'm shaking right now because it's, it, this is, you know, it's, it's the Word of God and, and it must be done correctly. And so, and so in Luke chapter 5, in chapter 4, right after Jesus, right after Jesus were uh, tempted by the devil and he got baptized. And uh, in Luke chapter 5, it's really the detail of, of calling Peter to God. Because in Matthew, when you read in Matthew and, and Mark, all you see is, um, come on, Peter, I'll make you fishers, man. That's all you saw. But in Luke, he showed you the very detail on how Jesus ministered to Christ, uh, how Jesus ministered to Peter. Okay, so anyway, so in, in chapter 4, um, Jesus, after he was baptized, he visited, he was sharing the gospel. And he went into a synagogue. And, 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 and the practice in the synagogue back then is when uh, a minister would go into the front and sit down and read the words. And, and people just started, you know, asking questions or talking about it or whatever. And Jesus just came out of nowhere and went into the synagogue and just sat right into it. And someone just brought this script to him. And you know what he says? And it says? And it says... The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach the gospel, to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are, to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. That's, that's what he read while he was in the synagogue, okay? When that's done, he went on to, to, to start preaching the gospel. And one of the things that happened, a, a miracle that happened, he went to, into uh, Peter's house. Went to Peter's house. This is in chapter 4 of Luke. He went to Peter's house. And at that time, his mother-in-law was sick. The mother-in-law was sick. And so... Uh, he, Jesus came in there and healed his mother-in-law. And he saw, Peter saw this. Peter saw this with his own eye, with this miracle. And, and, he got, and, and she got healed. But nothing really happened. Okay? Then and they went on, and, 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 and Jesus just went on and started preaching the gospel again. Then he went into this uh, Sea of Galilee. And we're going to read it. We're going to pick it up right here. And in Luke chapter 5, um, verse 1, and it says, And it came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. And he stood by the lake of Gisenaret and, and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them. They're not in the, in the boat. And we're washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, who Jesus, which was Simon's uh, ship, and prayed him. I just want to, you see, you see that, you see the word? Jesus prayed him uh, that he would trust out a little from the land. This is, this, is, this is God Almighty. And he asked Peter a request. He prayed him. I mean, he could have just done, hey, can you, you put that over there, please? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you think, no, this is God Almighty. He requested, he asked, he prayed him to bring that, to bring the boat or the ship a little out there. And so that's what he, that's what he did. Okay, a little trust out of the land. And he sat down, Jesus, and taught the people out of the ship. 
Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in, to, in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ship so that they began to sink. And in verse 8, it says, when Simon Peter saw it, when Simon Peter saw this miracle, he fell down at his knee, Jesus' knees, saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, of, a simple man, O Lord. Amen. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partner with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now, notice, notice this. When Peter saw that, you know, he, um, Jesus told him, Go cast on the other side and you'll catch fish. And immediately what he did was he fell down at Jesus' feet and he says, Depart from me. For I never knew you. Now, my question is, why didn't he do that the first time he saw the miracle healing his mom or his mother-in-law? Why didn't he do that? Or why didn't he do that when Jesus sat down on his boat, on his boat, and heard Jesus preaching the gospel instead as soon as he saw, as soon as he saw this net full of fishes, and he dropped down on his knees and saying, "Depart from me." You know, you know, church, that 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 is really um, a powerful scene right there, because um, a lot of us. A lot of us, uh, see, this is Peter's, this is Peter's um, way of life, to catch fish. And if he doesn't have it, he's not going not gonna to live. Doesn't have fish, not going to live. And, and a lot of us, a lot of us, um, God is, you know, God is showing us many things that we could do, but we don't do it. Uh, because we don't see a miracle from our work. Wow. We don't see a miracle that God is doing. Hey, God, uh, I need a better job. God, uh, you know, uh, I know you, 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 you can make this more, you can give me more money for this job. And, and you know, the reason that, that Jesus, the, re the reason that Jesus did this miracle in front of Peter's eyes because he was telling them, I am enough. I, I am enough for you, Peter. N nobody else can make you do. Because he, God showed him what his flesh can be satisfied on. And, and, and now he, he saw it. He saw it. And, and because this is what the way his life, this is, this is living. If he don't do it, he's not going to eat. And he saw this miracle. And he dropped down on his knee and says, uh, Lord, forgive me. I, I, you know, get away from me. I am a sinner. And, and that is the story. And, and see, church, Jesus was, was really targeting Peter. You know why? Because it's other, other buddies. You know, you, you hear what he says? And, and when, it says, when it says, For he was astonished all that were with him at the draft of the fish, which they had coming. And so James and John and Zebedee, which were partnered with Simon, and Jesus said unto them, Fear not from henceforth, thou shalt catch, catch men. Because Peter was like the head leader in there. You know, what, they might not be looking at that, but 
whatever they do, Peter, they want to, whatever Peter do, they want to do, you know, and so Jesus targeted Peter. He ministered unto them. At first, he showed them, you know, church, we do many activities. I just want to labor on this a little bit. We do many, many activities in this ministry. Jesus displayed. You know when Jesus, you know when Jesus makes some miracles? You know he was doing advertising. He was showing people what he could do. He was showing people, he was advertising. He was showing people what he could do. And church, what are we doing to advertise our Lord God Almighty so that these people out there can receive the word of God into, this, into, into him and, and bring him to church and bring him to uh, the knowledge, into the knowledge, into a relationship with God? What, what you know, that, that, is, that is what, that is one thing that Peter or, or Jesus did. He was really sharing his faith with Peter. That was, that was all means. And, and he tried the word of God. He sat down, he sat down on, the, on the boat and he, and he said the gospel. That didn't work. But then really, he, he, got, he got to him when he uh, touched on his income. That's his income. And, 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 Jesus, and, and he says, Jesus tell, basically tell him, look, I am enough for you. And so, and so, I just wanted to say that um, this morning, and 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 Jesus really um, uses many many things about fish. I, you ever wonder why why Jesus used many uh, use fishes as a reference to to you know Jesus uh, used the fish. When they didn't have money, he told them to catch fish, and the fishes got gold in their mouth. And then when they didn't have anything to eat, Jesus told them, you know, bring the two fishes and the loaf, and he multiply them. And, and really, church, which Jesus was really saying that whatever we are, this is the sign of Jonah. This is the sign of Jonah. And, and I want to read you a verse that... Um, um, did that what he's talking about in Luke chapter 11 verse 29 to 32 and, and, and when the people were gathered thick together he began to say this is an evil generation uh, they seek a sign and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet for as Jonas was a sign unto the Nineveh so shall the son, also the son of man be to this generation. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Wow. Yes, church, we, we teach Jonah the whale story to the children and it's a great, great story. But, but, but you know, there's a lot more than, to that than just the story. Um, when, when, when Jonah didn't want to preach the word of God, he just refused to, to preach. What did God do? Sense the storm. Sense the storm. And, and you know what? I, you have to be careful because all those people that were in the storm with him are in danger, not just him, are in danger. So if I'm not doing and sharing the will of God, I could be endangering the people that are around me. It, 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 it's, it's, it's just simple as that. I could be endangering. Church, it's, it's survival. This is sharing the word of God is, is about survival. And, and the world is really, really uh, hungry. They don't know it, but they're really hungry for the word of God. And, 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 and if I'm See, the thing is, not just the storm, okay? 
don't Jonah went into the inside of the belly of the fish for three days and he was stubborn and church a lot of us are stubborn a, a lot of us are stubborn I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm putting myself into that world as well, you know, because we, we, we just have our own ways sometimes. And we just say, I can't share the gospel because I don't know how to read the Bible. I can't understand the Bible. I, I don't know how to share the, the people. And in, in church, just plain and simple, we are endangering the people that are around us, not just myself. And, and those people around. And so you know what they did. You know what happened, right? They had to throw Jonah away. And actually, those people didn't want to throw Jonah away because they felt so sorry for him. They felt so sorry for Jonah because they didn't want to commit a sin. And even though they know what he's doing. But then they prayed to God. They prayed to God. They said, they said God, you know. But the storm didn't stop. It, it went on. And church, you know how many storms of life that come through our life each and every day? You know, and, 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 and a lot of people said life is not fair. Life is not fair. Really? Yeah, it, it's not fair. It's, it's, it's just, this is just a, 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 way, a way of life. You know, we, we just have to be, I mean, who are we? If God, if Jesus himself had to go through these trials and tribulations, this this the sickness of the world i mean who am i not to go through what he went through and and we're not we're not even even close to that so i i uh, you know sometimes when we when we share the gospel we just all we're, we're waiting for this power we're waiting for this magic in our life to just kick in you know just oh if it just kicks in this Holy Spirit in me, I'm going to go share the gospel. I'm going to go out and about. Maybe just kick this Holy Spirit inside of me. It, really, church, you know the anointing of God? You know where the anointing of God? The anointing of God is in a place where the work is in a place where the work that we're not work, we're not doing. That's, that's the anointing of God. There, it's in a place, it's in a prayer that we're not praying. It's in a fellowship. The anointing of God is in that fellowship that we're not being with. It, it's in, anointing of God is in, it's in those community that we're not trying to get into. Anointing of God is in the activity that we put, the church put out there where we're not even trying to really pray for it and to really get the people to go over there and to really say, you know, we need, we need some people out there to really, um, you know, advertise Jesus. Advertise Jesus. That's, that's, what it's, that's what it's all about. We're, 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 just, we're, we're just a bunch of sinners trying to be, to do the will of God. And in and, and church, there's, there's no, there's no, um, the only people that are allowed, the only people that are allowed in heaven are perfect people. Yes. The only, only allowed, the only people that are allowed, and, and you know what? You might have to say, how can you be perfect? Get into the grace of God. That's how you get perfect. That's, that's the only way. That's the only way. We got to get into the grace of God in church. We need to share the word of God out there. Because in the, Bible, the Bible talks about it. It says, many have chosen, but many have chosen, but many have called, but you, few are chosen. And in and, and church, I, I, I love you. I, I just wanted to, um, you know, pour my heart out in you and, and, and just really tell, you know, really, this is the message that God had laid on my heart. And he, and he just really opened my heart and he said, you got you to gotta share the word of God to people. You know, if, if not, you know, I, I just, just, just one thing. I just did one thing. This church, this church puts out many activities out there. And this is not, this is not because uh, 
We want to have fun. We want to, and, and those are good. Those are all good. And the reason behind these activities that we do out there is, is really to, to, to get a chance to share the word of God to the people, to bring the love of God to people out there, and to bring the love of God to those that are lost, to those that are, and this is the way uh, to do it. And I just want to say God bless you. I appreciate you.